Okay, so now we're going to talk about integration. That was the that was the third uh, that was the third aspect of NMR signals or spectra that we were interested in. Okay, so the it's the integration, and we're going to call it the area under the curve. This can, this is a very simple concept, which is uh, which you'll get very soon. And the integration is essentially the area under the curve. It's basically like a calculus problem, right? So if there was if this was a calculus, if this was a formula that was graphed in calculus, and we integrated this formula or this function, then we would get the area under the curve. That's what that's what integration is. So we're going to call it integration. Really all we're doing is measuring how much area is under this curve. So the computer's going to do this for us and it's going to measure it. When the computer measures it, it's going to give us an output of a number. This is typically the number that you're going to get. These numbers here. Uh, they might if you're doing an actual NMR, actually we're we're mostly going to do a virtual NMRs this this summer, but if you were doing a an actual NMR, you'd get real numbers like this. And you say to yourself, all right, so this looks like it's about 1. Well, it is 1 because it's going to take the lowest number and, and normalize it, right? So whatever the, the actual area is, it's going to divide everything by that number. This goes to 1. Can you see this is about 1.5, and this is about 1. This is about 1.56. So what will happen is you'll, this is what you'll do, is you'll take these numbers and you'll multiply them all so that you get whole numbers, right? And it looks like if I multiply everything by 2, watch, if I multiply everything by 2, then this is going to go to 2. This is going to go to, can you see that's basically 3? Okay, what's this number? It's basically 2. And this number is basically 3. Okay, so you're going to keep doing that until you get whole numbers for the areas under the curve. Uh, many of the problems that you see, these are going to be done for you. Not the, not the whole, um, yeah, these will be done for you, exactly. Um, and so you'll have a relative number of hydrogens that are represented by that circle. I'm not sure I even said that. This this area equals the relative number of hydrogens represented by that signal. Okay, I should say relative. Here's this next slide. will point that out even better. The integrations are relative quantities rather than absolute counts. Right. So if you if you were going to analyze a, a, a yeah, system like this, here's three hydrogens, and there's three, and they're equivalent. Right. So you're going to have one signal was six and here's another one and another one and this is probably going to be downfield a little bit and there's only two hydrogens on each of those so there's four here right so you've got six and four but that's not what the integration is going to show you the integration is going to show you two to three because it's relative quantities it's ratios okay so you're going to have to do that yourself sometimes you're, if you see a number there and you happen to know say from a mass spec that the number of hydrogens in the sample, suppose you know from mass spectroscopy that the number of hydrogens is 10, and you see this, you're like, what? Oh, I gotta multiply those by two. So the actual ratio is four to six. All right, so that's what, um, that's what this, this slide uh, demonstrates, that we have a, a three here. Was it three? I forget now. The one that's, this is going to be, no, that's, this is further downfield because it's closer to the oxygen. That's not going to be three. That's going to be a two, and this is going to be three, right? That's what your readout's going to say. But you're going to say to yourself, wait, my formula is C5H10O. I got 10 hydrogens, and two plus three does not give me 10. It gives me five. So this must really represent four hydrogens, right? And this must represent six hydrogens. And that's the process you're going to go through when you're doing integration or when you're when you're evaluating the the um, what the computer's integrated. Area under the curve represents the relative number of hydrogens represented by that signal.